start recording until now. So if you're watching on YouTube, nothing happened until this moment. Alright, we catch the airport shuttle. Try to book a new flight to your vacation island. Did the storm. All direct flights have been cancelled, but our route is available to get around to the storm. You take it. Of which flight, you decided to check with the elves back in the North Pole. So you're playing a memory game. And are ever so excited to explain the rules. Okay. In this game, the players take turns saying numbers. They begin by taking turns reading from a list of starting numbers. Okay. Then each turn consists of considering the most recently spoken number. If it was the first time the number has been spoken, the current player says zero. Otherwise, the number had been spoken before, the current player knows how many turns apart the number is from when it was previously spoken. Okay. Seems, uh, seems legit. So after each, after the starting numbers, each turn results in that player speaking aloud either zero, if the number, last number is new, or an age. If the last number is... Or an age. Okay. So it's a zero three six. Now, six was not. So it's the first time the number has been spoken. Fourth time it's spoken zero. Next, consider again the last number with zero. Since it had been spoken before, the next number to speak is the difference between the turn number when it was. Okay, so it's gonna it's gonna be a loop, right? Okay, and since so it's three, three has been spoken, so we say on turns five and two, so. Oh, minus two. How many turns apart from when the num from the number is from when it was pretty easy? Okay, okay, okay. okay. Uh, da, 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 da. The one and then zero. Nine numbers four. First new Okay. Okay, there's no end. Okay. What will be the twenty twentieth number spoken in the example above? Twenty ten number spoken will be four three six. I think it would be cool if we could like figure out like a sequence like will it repeat and see if we're repeating ourselves because that's what I think will happen in this game is that it will like we will come into a loop essentially and it will be again and again and again let's see Let's see, let's put on something else by Monster Cat. This is, I mean, this is good, but um, uh, we might want maybe a bit too much. Uh, okay. Playlist. I've never heard these songs before, so they might not be good, but I think they're good. I think they might be good. Okay, so let's just simulate this first, right? Do, 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 do. Very topical stuff. Um, no need to write a parser today. So by everything writing the file path, IO list of numbers. Get input. Uh map. Uh oh right, this won't be a So okay, we we'll, we won't even get a lines thing. So we'll just say Uh how do we say this? Set by one read P so, okay, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna, you know, we're gonna read the file. Um, and we're gonna, so, and on top of the read file, we're gonna take the X, 
we're gonna say uh we're gonna add a like a th like a list on front of it and then a, a list character on the end of it and then we're going to say uh x and then we are going to read at list of int Ba -da -da -da. Ba -da 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 -da. May I may equals uh, let's just let's just see what the input gives us. Now we see it to day 15 and we compile day 15. Jitsi day 5th. Oops. G Jitsi. We're gonna say 03 right away so we don't have to change it later. Day 15. That HS. And. No, we don't do and here. Measure. Command. Day 15.exe. We have to. Oh, I forgot to split. Otherwise, I can't see. Measure command. Okay, let's see here. GC03. Day 15. Dot it's just. So I'm wondering, uh, like, those of you watching, like, what programming languages are you usually using? Because, you know, I feel, I mean, Haskell is a bit esoteric, right? But, uh, is everyone just using JavaScript or C or something these days? But like, I mean, I see a lot of streams in, like, Rust. Like, there's no one, not so many people streaming Haskell. So I'm just wondering, like, is it, a, is it not a thing? Okay, we got the list. Now. I think, I think, you know, if we just simulate this, it won't be too bad. ba 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 da ba 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 Yeah, Chrono Kirby is a Haskeller. The only proper language, am I right? Let's see. Let's just do an int map. Module uh, import data dot int map int map import data dot int map as I am qualified uh, yeah but that's not out yet right it's gonna do like GHC 2020 right so the initial numbers are spoken so let's uh, initialize our uh, our map so we are going to do uh, init in, in initial shell map. Uh, it's gonna take a list of ints and gonna return us an int map of ints. Initial map is gonna be a I am dot from uh, from ask list. No, just from list of uh, zip. And we're gonna sip the input with zero uh, one. Okay, and then uh, print that initial map. See what happens. Yeah, I mean, I use Haskell 2020. I mean, I'm always adding new extensions, right? Uh, because I mean, that's that's what's nice, right? So. So the first number spoken starting with 0, 3, and 6. Now, consider the last number spoken 6. Since that was the first number I spoken, the fourth number was spoken is 0. Okay, so...
Next num is gonna take in a num and an int map of ints and return us a num. Now let's say here update. Update is gonna take a pair of the current number and the current int map and it's going to return current number int map int so I, what i think that this will be like fix we can just like fix it and, and it will it will it will become a sequence let's see uh update cur num uh so far so we are gonna say uh case so let's see yeah case cur num uh i am dot this here so far if we look it up in so far of just i so then was last spoken in turn uh, so okay if, it, if it's nothing then we want the result is the current number will be zero so that's what they will say and we will update uh so we need the current turn number also Okay, so let's say here spoken. So nothing will be so next so 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 turn prime is going to be turn plus 1. And we're not we don't we're not going to we're going to be updating that in both paths here. So this is going to be the turn, nothing, turn prime. And then if we, if we, uh, if the spoken number was not a member of so far, then we are going to say I am dot insert uh, the cur, the, this, the number. Uh, We're gonna add the current number, and then what's the element? That's gonna be turn. And a, and then it's gonna be the so far, right? No, actually, this is so. This is gonna be at, at all times. So far, prime is gonna be. We're always gonna update the number. Because it's always last spoken this time. Uh, so far prime. So if it's just turn, then we do no. Uh, just a uh, last spoken. Then we return a uh, turn minus last spoken comma turn prime. So far prime, right? And then this is probably flipped. No. Hello, uh, so far, so in so far, we're gonna be looking up spoken. Okay, let's see. Let's just see. So now we're just simulating it. Uh, so um, we just simulate it until 2020, I guess. So solution is going to take in the uh, the list of integers and it's going to return the int solution is, so it's going to take in the input input and it's going to take okay so uh run run to so run okay if it's so it's the s 
Spoken, comma, 2020. We match on the fact that we're going to the 2020 turn. And uh, we don't care about this. Equals spoken. Okay, run of this equals. So we're going to say run. Uh, and then so. Run a. Okay, so what? How? what's the initial. The initial map. So we're going to be. We're going to take everything. So let's uh, take the. Uh, so. In e spoken, this is initial spoken. Again, uh, uh, rest. This is the reverse of the input. So, and uh, initial so far is gonna be initial map of reverse rest. And these are gonna be easy operations, you know? So, run. We're gonna run it with the initial spoken, I spoken. We're gonna start off at... For turn, this is turn one. So we're gonna start off at turn one. Uh, so this one actually has to start at turn one. Now we're not gonna start at turn one, we're gonna start at... Length rest and then we're gonna have the initial map of the rest so if uh, this is gonna be length of initial rest no length so this is gonna be length of the initial rest plus one okay so uh, no this is gonna be i so far I so far okay so this is the this is the kind of the the entire program and then run so uh, otherwise it's going to be any other input we will say we call run on update a other it's just gonna be crazy bad click 306 milliseconds but uh Oh, this is supposed to be 436. Is this... Are we off by one? No. This is supposed to be 2020. So, okay, let's look at... Uh, let's look at the trace here. Up until turn... 10. We're gonna run until turn 10. And we're just gonna say here trace show ID import debug dot trace this music is a bit intense right I'm gonna switch back to Harris Heller he is it's more lo-fi you know it's more relaxing this way that's how programming stream should be we're not doing hardcore stuff we're just relaxing so zero uh let's see turn turn four zero okay turn five three turn six three turn seven is one and then zero and then four and then zero Okay, let's... I think we're off by one somehow. Seems to work. Uh, oh, is this off by one this way? Uh, 
that's all the turns. Do, 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 We're not gonna review this, so let's uh, remove the trace. Uh, yeah. So yeah, uh, thirty-three six earlier. No, it was three three six, right? Oh, four three six. Oh, I thought I just I looked at it and I saw three three six, and I was like, "What?" Okay, it was a. Uh, Okay, uh, now let's see. I'm just wondering if it like if it, if it repeats, if there's a repeating pattern. Um, no, I mean the turn will always be going higher and higher, right? Or, no, but that would that would be okay. Uh, let's just uh, let's just let's run it for the input. Let's see. Let's see if this is this crazy bad. Let's let's not even get the okay. Yeah, let's not even get the input. Let's just say do Let's just paste it in, right? Oh, and then we don't do this, but rather we say print solution of input thanks Chrono Kirby we could have been stuck there for a while <laughs> never trying it again 468 and that runs in record time right 24 milliseconds I mean that's not too bad all right and you know, okay, identifying patterns, all that jazz, we could have done it. But, like, you know, this was so fast that there's no need. I think, I think what we've been engaging in this stream a little bit is what uh, Knuth calls uh, premature optimization. You know, we've been optimizing way too hard in the beginning. And that's just... Uh, and we've been just you know wasting or not wasting i mean we had fun but we've been spending so much time oh thanks remo for the follow by the way i missed it i was so focused totally missed that follow anyway so now yeah now this is gonna take a while Let's just see how long it takes. Damn. Uh, solution two. Because uh, we know we're using we're using int maps and stuff, so it's not gonna be that bad. For this is definitely, I think, you know, what you're supposed to do here is that you're going to say, okay, there's a pattern. And you can jump. You can, like, jump a bunch of terms, right? Let's uh, let's 
give it like two or three minutes. Okay, took 59 seconds. Let's see. I'm just gonna run it again because it usually takes less time the second time. But 59 seconds, I mean. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's so. That's why it always says like 500 milliseconds, and then I run it again and it. Oh yeah, I know I, I am compiling, but I say I measure command on this expression, which is not compiled, right? Two minutes. Did you use a regular map, Timmy? Less than one second. Yeah. I'm going to say that you identified a pattern. Is that correct, Chrono Kirby? But you don't know you brute forced it. Oh no. Oh no. Did you do? Unsafe IO. Okay. One minute. Okay. It wasn't faster. Let's just check if it's. I mean, it's correct. Oh my god. Data vector mutable unboxed. Yeah. That will go fast. Let's let's do it. Let's do crazy, crazy fast stuff. Uh, but we're not gonna do vector. We are going to do U array. My favorite import data dot uh, r dot array. Her array dot st mm. yeah let's just let's just do it I mean we've been here for half an hour and we're already done I mean usually we spend so much time optimizing everything space leak Better to have a space leak than a gas leak. Uh huh? Because gas expa expands into space. I don't know. Sometimes I just try out jokes. And they're not that good. But uh, I have a very dedicated fan base. Willing to listen to all my jokes. That's the trick, you know. Find the people... We'll laugh at your jokes. All right, let's let's go. Let's sell our souls. I'm in the mood for some soul selling. Uh, data array. Dot, so we're gonna have unboxed elements that can be manipulated in the ST Monad. Let's go. Solution two optimized. I mean, Chrono Kirby, you didn't quite properly. If you did not use unsafe perform IOD dupe, uns wait, unsafe unutterable dedupe perform IO. No, this is in bait bite string. Uh, I think it's here. Where was it again? 
selling our souls in a referentially transparent way yeah i mean technically we could use linear haskell yeah i mean it's in the source but i i just i don't remember which module it is in is it in internal probably internal right and save oh there we go and save dupable perform io this this is the good stuff accursed unutterable perform io <laughs> this is the best function in haskell look at this it is in fact a malevolent agent of chaos it unpicks the seams of reality and the io monad so that normal rules no longer apply it lulls you into thinking it is reasonable but when you're not looking it stabs you in the back and aliases all of your mutable buffers the carcass of many a seasoned haskell programmer lies strewn at his feet bunch of ghc tickets do not talk about safe you don't know what is safe oh my god this is like please do not use this function and then they go ahead and use it all the time in by string but what does it do well it just does io it takes an io wave turns an a but how does it do it well it matches on the real world you know let's start there it matches on the real world it takes the monad io monad matches on the real world token and that is this is the token like you have to look at this value here and evaluate it to kind of make sure that all the operations that happened before happen but what do they do they throw it away it is not used in the result boom this is this is io this is how this is how they do io in other languages they just don't care they just run things it's good stuff okay take a list of ints to int now input is going to be we're going to do the same trick here we're going to take a we're going to take the uh, I spoke in rest how do I write SD code again um run spoken we're still gonna match on this oh my god y i v copy the word it's good stuff copy the word uh we don't care this is gonna be spoken Data dot array dot mutable. This is immutable. I'm we're looking for we're looking for MRA. Yeah. We're gonna be run doing run SD. Okay, that's what we're going to be doing. 
because we don't need this run as the URA because we actually we don't want an array we just want the result uh, run st do run st run um and this is gonna be the uh so we're gonna have an initial how are we gonna be passing things here or we're not gonna we're not even we're not gonna pass things around even uh So I've, I've, I've forgotten. Yes, exactly. Dollar is good. So builds a new array with every element initialized to the supplied value. Constructs a mutable array from a list of initial elements. The list gives the elements of the array in ascending order, beginning with the lowest index. Okay, so we're going to be doing a new array. And we, we look at the numbers. And they are never ever going to be larger than 30 million, 3 million, right? Why Haskell? Because it allows you to write code in a safe way. You have all the type information to guide you. So here we specify that this should be a list of ints to int, and it kind of prevents us from doing mistakes. It's also super fast. You can parallelize it. Not in this problem, but a lot of problems can be parallelized very easily. And it goes boom, super fast. And all the type stuff and the referentially transparent stuff just makes it go fast. Makes it go. You can just parallelize without worrying. Uh, maybe we should try to do that sometime, you know, write like concurrent Haskell code. Let's do that later on the channel. Okay. Uh, so, uh, this is going to be just return spoken. Now run, uh, I comma, uh, last. So, so spoken and, and it's some other term. So then we're going to do this update stuff. It's going to be do. We are going to check. So we're going to we're going to we're going to get the read array. Write array. Uh, uh, let's see. Um, do 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 uh, does that answer your question? So that vulnerabilities like buffer overflow would be null with Haskell. Uh, I'm not gonna claim that. It's going to be. It's a lot harder to write vulnerabilities in Haskell, but it's still possible, especially if you're writing stuff that goes super fast, like byte string. And let's un curse it unutterable perform IO. Uh, that can go wrong. Okay. But cool thing about Haskell is that you can kind of say, I don't want to use that. Um, but also you can like add security information to your types, you know, because sometimes it's not even it's like the information leak is not because because of uh, like you you overflowing a buffer or something, it's just like you you accidentally 
made the password available like in the http request or whatever and then you can use something called uh dcc and uh, uh make it like you can like type check you can like say in the types this here password is has a, is is private like this value here is private and and like functions like print would just like and then you can write functions that say you know print only safe and they would only work for values which is, which is allowed to print so there's a lot of like the type system allows you to write not only like functional guarantees you know in the sense that this is what it should take in this is what it should result in but also you can write like proofs and programs and and kind of so the thing is that types are kind of theorems types are saying this is what this function so like this is this is a function that takes in an into like integer and returns an another integer um so you can state in the type exactly what the behavior should be so that's the theorem and then the function itself is a proof of that theorem um which means that you can you can do a lot of cool stuff a lot of cool stuff uh so let's write here init run that's gonna be do uh okay this is gonna take in the ref do uh can i can i like do i i have a reference to a mutable array right uh array new array read array write array Hmm. New array. Uh, wait, let me see. New list array. New list array. And then this is going to go from zero to maximum value. And we're going to take the reverse of rest. Um, this is going to be the array. I think we can do this. Yeah, yeah. So that's what the, th the thing is. But the thing is that you can't, you can't accidentally. Oh, cool. Yeah, but the thing is you can't like accidentally you can't print the password you can tell it however you want it to print but you can't like use a regular print function so you can't accidentally you can't accidentally print it which is cool and for data dot array dot m array uh i want to say here new list array uh and then i want to say uh, init run ref we're gonna be new st ref to that array um import data dot st ref and then i'm gonna write that array to the st ref uh, right as the ref do I can't I can just pass the array in right <laughs> okay and then I'm gonna say uh, wait can I just do like this new list array uh, zero comma oh my god Let's run it for for fifth, 14 first. 
Do I like have caps lock on or something? No, why does it keep going like that? Uh Why does it keep like scrolling up? It's very ugh. There's something wrong somewhere. Uh run new SD array 014 and then here this would be new oh my god. Um need to run and then this is gonna be I spoken and it's going to be the initial turn is gonna be length of rest plus one uh, but there's some bug somewhere But there's some uh, some syntax error <laughs> Is it here? Is it anywhere in this function? Yeah, it is somewhere in this function So solution optimize run is the <laughs> Oh, oh my god, okay, I found it Undefined. That's great. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to teach people. I'm trying to make them realize how cool Haskell is. Now, this one here. Oh, no. I have to import control.monad.st data array new list array um control moand Now this here, it doesn't work because it can't figure out what kind of array to use. Uh, so and we have to provide that somehow by providing um, so let's see. So run is going to take in a tuple of why are we, why are we even doing this as a tuple? We can just do it like this. Uh, like this, right? Run takes an int and another int. And returns an ST uh, uh, Can I just do I can just do ST URA S int yeah Yeah, they are sus <laughs> Exactly correct uh, STS uh, gonna be wrong oh it's going to take in an stu array s int I'm going to return an uh, uh, 
What? S-T-U-R-A Accent has kind Okay, we need one more argument here So the index is int And the elements are also going to be int Now this works And I don't need the parentheses here Now, so if we're at the end, we just return uh, we return um, now. Okay, so if it's if we if we, we're at the end, okay, if it's not in right, when you say do, uh, so first of all, we say uh, val is going to be read array. Uh, what is the, what is read array? That is, read, or I'm just, okay, so we take in the array first, r, read array, and we're gonna read the current spoken, which is gonna give us the element, and then we are gonna say, wait, what did we see? Uh, no, so I think I think because we need to know if it's actually So, okay, what do we see? Okay, so It will never be zero. So new list new array New array will we will initialize everything to zero we initialize it to zero. Uh, let me see. I think that's. I think what. I think new list array does that. Let's just see. Uh, will it complain? Uh, I mean, so that creates the new array, and then it just takes from the list. So that's okay. So we'll initialize everything to zero in this array because we're using st. Uh, so we could use new array, and then we would just have to write the elements in the first elements in ourselves. That wouldn't be too bad. I'm gonna see here. If val is zero, then then it hasn't been spoken before. Do, 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 do. And then, and then we're going to return. Then we're going to run, and then the spoken was this. Turn plus one. And a uh, right array. Oh my god. Right array. And then we have to write to the array. And uh, then do uh, write array r uh, uh, spoken turn. Turn plus one r, right? Same as we did here. Spoken, and then if it if it's not zero, else do okay. So first of all, we're gonna read the value currently there, and then we just always write to it. Run. Uh, Else we're going to run the what well it's 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 turn minus val turn plus one r well, arrays don't expand do they because right now you just have a tiny array with 14 indices I don't, I think they like they're lazily initialized like I don't think it will literally allocate an array with all the indexes. Uh, let's see. 
Let's see what solution to optimize to this. Because like it just it just creates an array. Uh, so what it does is that it creates an array with this range, and then it fills from the list. Uh, and then it just kind of re says return, you know. So. I think, I think this will be fine. If you access outside the bounds, isn't that a crash? No, I don't think so. Then, so what it says is that, so it uses new array underscore, where new array underscore uses rl bottom, and uh, rl bottom, oh, that's gonna be undefined array element. Oof. Let's see. Index minus 12 out of range. Okay, yeah. So we will have to, so. Init R is gonna take in a list of ints. Okay, so. Top val is gonna be oh sheet yeah I, I should have uh, max val is gonna be it's gonna be uh, okay it ran too far <laughs> no it still happens where is it getting the minus twelve from. Oh, turn minus val. Is that correct? Yeah, turn minus last spoken. It takes an index and element, right? Uh, yeah, okay, let's let's do it the other way. comma 14 and the this this is going to be the initial element uh, and then so So we're going to put R and then we are going to write map M prime uh, X uh, X comma X comma Y and uh, no, Y comma X uh, it's going to be right array R I E and we're gonna do this on sip uh, the indices will start with one and this is gonna be the the input uh, and what's wrong here uh, uh, yeah okay Turn R, and it's complaining here. Why not uncurry? Okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
in it are uh rest Now it says one for fourteen. Uh, let's go back. Oh, we we only went up to turn ten. Uh, let's see here. Why does it start at turn seven? Oh, I'm running it on the input still. Uh, let's just get your input. Test input. Test input was zero three six, right? Yeah, zero three six. Let's try this for the Wow. Must be nice to have a soul, huh, Timmy? So as you get three is six, so we get zero. Uh we get zero on turn five. We get zero again. That's not good. For I mean, this should this shouldn't be the issue, right? So we get six, and so the three. So so turn three, we get so we get say six. Yeah, turn four, we should get zero. Oh, it's it's the opposite. I think so if the val is zero then we haven't seen it before it's the opposite so if if it's zero uh, then we haven't seen it before so then we should say zero turn right let's see So four should be uh, a reader rate. Oh, okay. Um, oh, I this should this is the, this is sort of the wrong way around. This should be one like this. Let's see. So we get six zero three three one six zero three three one zero four zero zero four zero cool let's see we can even move we can even move this here so we can see run if val equals zero then zero else turn minus val uh, turn plus one and then r r do 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 Uh, Timmy gets 60 seconds. That's not bad. 
Now, let's... So, for 2020... For the test input, it says 436, but so it still works for the test input. Now, solution uh, optimized on the input. And what was the result we got late earlier? We got 1801753 for 2020, right? No, 468. Yeah, that was the same as result we got for initial one. Uh, can you have it like this? I mean, this is a bit small, right? Now, let's see if this all paid off. Uh, here and then. running in two seconds running in 1.5 seconds that's uh same as chrono kirby right i mean not like that's like not not too far from chrono kirby right how big is this number here it's uh, it's thirty million. Date range. Uh, no, in date is not uh, not big enough. In sixteen, uh, thirty-two thousand. So we need in thirty-two, right? Yeah. Uh, let's see. See if we can like do this with like unboxed integers. I think this still might be some laziness. So the STU arrays are strict. Uh. Oh, that's just data out of Word, right? We need word 32 no i mean we're not gonna we're not gonna get anything better from word 32. because we need we need anyway to a lot more right This is the thing, I mean, we could have tried to analyze patterns and whatever, but... Um, Cause I think like, I think like if we see... If we see something spoken... And like if the array doesn't change... Um, there will be a loop in the thing and we can then jump lot of spaces ahead but okay uh 1.5 seconds yeah i think that's fine and we didn't do the whole program program analysis thing that we sometimes do safe arrays
Okay, we don't need a safety. Corona Carpy, where do you where do you think the laziness is coming from? Let's profile it. Yeah, exactly, right? Yeah, because like it has to check, does it match 30 million? <laughs> it's spending 77% of the time allocating the array. And this number is 100, it's 1.8 million. And the thing is, uh, we, we need of, uh, yeah, spoken is forced too, right? The 1.8 million, so, you know, like the, the range of indices here needs to go up to at least 2 million. So, you know, we could cheat by, like, if we know the answer, and we can just say 2 million here. Um, and, you know... Oh, no. Oops. I don't even use SDRF. So we can cheat, um... And say, because, like, we know, and then it won't have to allocate such a big array. Oh, but then we get out of index out of range. Ooh. Why is that index out of range? So this is two million. Oh, okay, yeah, because the final, final one isn't actually... The final one isn't actually, like, the, the highest number. <laughs> yeah, we could... Yeah, 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 exactly. So the thing is, uh... uh Uh, right array. <laughs> I mean, this is mute right array. I mean, isn't this selling our soul too much? Here we're just like... Yeah, this is too much, right? And I think this is what SD Array uses internally anyway. Okay, I think this is uh, I think this is good for for today. Uh, but what I'm going to do now, since we've finished so fast, is uh, I'm going to take like two minute break, one minute, and then we're going to do day twelve. How does that sound? Uh, okay, it takes one point five to do both. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's what I, I think that's what I really like about Haskell here, you know. Okay, yeah, I mean, this first one just takes like a 24 seconds, so. That's what I really like about Haskell. 
is that, you know, here we quote unquote sold our soul and used like unsafe arrays. But it was quite okay. Like the type system just makes sure it all works. And this isn't even an unsafe array. Unsafe mutable array Haskell. Data.array.unsafe. This is where it's at. Oh, she. Oh, shit. Yeah, okay, so this is just freeze and unfreeze. So we're not actually freezing anything. So. This is, this is fine. And we, I mean, so a faster way to do this, like the simulation way is to do, you know, would be to do like a dynamically expanding array. But like, this is just, I mean, that's essentially what the int map was doing, but that wasn't as fast for some reason. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I think this is good. I'm gonna take a quick break now and then let's move on with the git add day 15.hs. Let's actually add the profiling information. I think that's interesting. If people wanna see. Oh. Okay, let's not add it. Git commit am day 15. Alright, uh, two minute break. Let's continue with uh, day 12. <laughs> 